It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. <sighs> you know, I wanted to start this one by talking about the internet for a few minutes, okay? I, I clearly, I love the internet. <laughs> uh, I think the internet's an amazing tool. Just the fact that you have like this place where it's this, uh, you can have a community, you can have this, you have the, all of society, all of culture, humanity's collective knowledge, right, in one place is such a valuable tool and resource. And just like the interaction with other people, it's amazing. However, <laughs> the thing that I dislike the most about the internet is interaction with other people sometimes, sometimes. Uh, now, I'm pretty good at, you know, I don't let things stick around. When I hear something, see something I don't like, I just, you know, the in one ear, out the other type of, type of guy. But there's one question that people ask sometimes where I'm just like, I don't know how to answer this. And it absolutely gets under my skin. And that is when somebody leaves the comment on a video... That's neat, but how much is it worth? I'm just like, that mentality, that like way of framing the experience of going rock hounding and all of that is just such like a bad way to look at it in my opinion, you know? Like, I, that, that. And then it got worse when somebody left a comment saying, that's neat, I would go there. How do they say it? That's neat. I would go there if I could sell it or something to that effect. And I'm like, that, that is a bad way. I don't know if there's like a good word for this. <laughs> but when you just look at things in the sense of like, is it a bunch of dollar signs sitting out there? Ah, I don't know. It just... If, doesn't sit well with me, you know? It's a, it's not not a nice way of looking at it, in my opinion, you know? Um, there's some things that you can't put a good price tag on. I mean, it'd be easy to sit there and be like, well, it's worth what somebody will pay and all of that. And I don't like looking at it like that. Never, never mind the fact, okay? Now, dirty little, I'll let you guys in on a dirty little secret about the world of rock counting. I gotta be in. now. This is speaking generally. Generally speaking, you cannot pick up rocks on public lands and sell them. There's exceptions and permits, and there's claims, and there's things. And, but just across the board, right? Like that, not legal. And everybody knows it, and nobody says anything about it. But and people flip rocks and do selling and. All of that, and then, you know, technically shouldn't, but it's kind of viewed as this no harm, no foul thing. And people see rocks and they see dollar signs, and I don't know how to respond. And I kind of just want to be, I kind of want to be mean a little bit, but I, I don't want to be mean about it. Um, so I guess I'm coming to you guys, the viewers here on the Saturday night special, and asking for your input. Um, what do you think? You know, I mean, I view a lot of the stuff that we collect as not able to have a price tag, right? Like, and I'll let, I'll, I'll, let, I'll clue you in a little bit, right? What, because when you view things as like a, just a dollar sign, right? Um, you're missing, you're missing out, okay? What is the value, right, of a chunk of basalt? Like, yay big. That, that, that big of a piece of basalt. Most people would probably be like, virtually nothing, because it's so abundant. Well, this is how it's more valuable than you might think, to me, depending on the way in which you view, view something. Um, three years ago, wait, <laughs> three years ago, right? Myself and Sarah, uh, we went to a road cut and uh, collected some basalt. 
and it was kind of uneventful. I mean, I kind of didn't know what I was looking at, and just, you know, the, the world of rocks and minerals is very complex, and the more I learn about rocks and minerals, the more I'm like, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. I, you know, like, uh, trying to be all like zen and humble because I'm just like not as complex as can be that chunk of basalt I'm now smashing it apart and inside that basalt inside some of the vugs I am finding opal fire opal and what I am going to uh hmm, what I'm going to call a zeolite right um and uh that so that chunk of basalt now has clued me in on a location area of fire opal common opal and possibly an interesting formation of a zeolite now with that context what is that chunk of basalt actually worth maybe it's still worth nothing but it has clued me in it's, it was a puzzle piece you know um and without the microscope, I wouldn't have been able to uh, come come up with that, those realizations, okay? I took those photos, um, and I posted some of them on Facebook, um, just simply because I thought the photos came out really well, right? I've been working on my microscope photography and getting better and better with it. I, I mean, I, I think so, at least. <laughs> uh, and I said at that time, um, I haven't identified it yet. Not asking for people to identify it for me, but just not yet. And here's this, here's that little sample, right? Like very little, little look at that little guy. Um, and uh, some of the things that people just shouted out into the void of the internet was chalcedony, barite, calcite, Japanese law twins, fluorite, opal, selenite, gypsum, and a siderite pseudomorph. Nah, um, the, it is so, everything seems so complex, okay? And I mean, it kind of just is, right? So, the, the culprit that I, I believe that I'm looking at here is still bite. And we have some interesting, well, we can look at the, the crystal formations here that you could find it in. And I believe what we're looking at in this photo, um, and we'll look at it again here shortly, you have that orthorhombic uh, stilbite kind of curling up, right? I think that's what this is um, and that. That's what I believe we have here. Now, when viewing rocks, yourself or looking at other people's rocks don't just shout out things that you think it could be um ask questions there's a lot of great questions that you could ask someone or ask yourself in relation to looking at something like where did it come from exactly um did you self-collect it do you have any additional information have you done any tests right these are all great questions to be asked you know um have you seen other things like it you know when i go to events like the wild turkey when there's a bunch of other people rock hunting and digging the conversations that i have with these people these people i didn't mean it that sounds bad with the other people there rock hunting um has so much value to it right like if you've interacted with me ever in person, I generally am going to try to ask a million questions. I'm like that that kid that's like always like pulling on someone's pant leg, like being like, why? Why? Like, because there's a lot that I don't know and a lot that I would like to know. And meeting up with people in real life is just, it's so, such a good, good time, you know? Um, and speaking of the wild turkey... Uh, which you should go watch that video. Um, well, what a great location, okay? I mean, uh, the mine owner is there, uh, Jim and his wife. I'm sorry, I forgot your not <laughs> forgot her name. Um, but uh, it's a, it's great to have a 
see a mine owner open up and get some digs happening for people, you know? Uh, and uh, it being close to where I live also helps, <laughs> what can I say? Um, this material, though, I've been asked a number of times about how it tumbles up. Now, I know Jim has tumbled some of this material, uh, but I don't have any of it. Um, so Jeremiah Ragnar Rocks, which I'm sure some of you have to have uh, also subscribe to him here on YouTube. Well, he, I sent him some, and he's going to tumble it up, uh, and we can maybe uh, see his process over on his channel, which I think will be fun. And uh, he said he's going to send me back a piece, which that'll be cool. I can have a nice, beautiful, tumbled piece of this. I mean, it's very green. Very green. Like, it's almost like this... Um, I don't know like we you get two kind of col real colors there you know you have this like much darker green and then this like almost neon it's like very like 80s <laughs> 80s green it seems like and uh some of the interesting colors that are coming out of there as well different inclusions and stuff next week we're gonna be taking the show back into the shop some i got I got a number of what I think be pretty good shop videos coming up in the coming month or so, and uh, that and that I think is it'll be it'll be quite fun. Um, that piece of basalt coming from that road cut. Well, I saw enough that we're gonna head back. <laughs> we're gonna make the drive back for it and uh, go hit that thing up and look at it with our fresh eyes now. You know, I mean, three years is a long time like we i've learned a lot myself and sarah have learned a lot in three years of producing videos here and learning about all this stuff and just being like nose to the grindstone learning about rocks so going back and revisiting some of the initial spots that we went to is high on my my priority list you know um very very much so in into that um I think we're going to probably leave this one here, everybody. Um, if you have a moment, definitely go check out the website and that. <laughs> check out the website. Been working on different things on the website and reworking listings and adding photos and going back through the rocks and taking photos of it and updating things. And uh, it should be even, even better. Speaking of the website, real quick, since I got your ear on it, um, Mineral displays. If you live in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Utah, <laughs> and you know of any locations whatsoever where there's minerals on display, either in a museum, a courthouse, uh, a whatever, any rocks and minerals on display, if you could send me an email, I'd really appreciate it. Currently rockhounding at gmail.com. I would love to be able to go and visit these locations, document them, and add them to the website. So uh, that would be very, very helpful to me if, if anybody out, is out there and you know of anything. Because it's, it, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to find some of these locations. And, you know, like small town museums, they usually have a website that's kind of lacking um, and uh, or not non-existent. So... Uh, I want to make a list, and we, I want to work that into some of our future future trips, for sure. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me in the shop. I hope you had a, had a good weekend, and, uh, well, I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.